Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me again for our wonderful painting, Shaun of the Sheep. This is um, going to be available um, after the event, so if you uh, have a problem catching up, you can rewind and go back and uh, have a look at it again. So I'm going to run through a few colours that you need today, um, give you a few minutes just to get them together. I'm going to hold this up so you can see maybe. So I've got a little bit of black on here, a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, tiny bit of uh, brown. If you can find brown, that would be great. It's kind of like a dark brown. White and a little bit of yellow. Don't worry about the green because we can mix yellow and blue together. So um, I'm going to go slow because this is a step-by-step -step painting and I want you to keep up. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. The other thing I'm going to tell you about is what brushes you may need in advance too. If you've got a very small brush like this, it's just a small round brush, that's a good thing to have. I've got a small angled brush here as well that I think I'm going to use. But any flat brush will do. Anything really. Whatever you've got, please use. So the paints I'm using are acrylic paints, which are water-based paints, so you may need to dip your brush into the water occasionally. Um, but put it back into your paint before you put it on your canvas. So, um, yeah. Okay, we're going to begin. I hope you're all ready. If you're not, as I said, I'll try and go slow. I'm going to use, first of all, my um, small brush. So this small brush here. And I'm going to dip it in the water, first of all. And I'm going to take... A little bit of my brown. As I said, if you haven't got brown, I'm going to give you a tip. If you add medium amounts of yellow, red and blue, you will come up with a brown. It may seem a little purple. If it's a little purple, put more yellow into it. But you can get that brown effect by just adding those three colours together. So yellow, red and blue. And um, at some point you can add a little bit of black if you want it a little bit darker. So I'm just mixing a very light brown here and what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to circle out the shape of his body or her body sorry it's Shauna not Shaun sheep <laughs> this case maybe okay so um, I'm going to, this is the same size canvas as I'm working on so about the size of my hand really as you can see is, is the um, actual sheep's body so I'm going to start by just um, doing kind of a half not quite a full circle so I'm going to cover, it doesn't matter if your lines are not straight, you can see how I'm just using some strokes that are um, see a bit longer down there in the middle. I'm just going to make those strokes longer. And I'm leaving that space there, and I'm coming over here now. And I'm, again, I'm just going to make some strokes downwards like so. So that's the first part. Quite simple, we're just going to mark out those shapes first of all. And I'm going to get the... You can also work with grey, so if you haven't got a brown or you don't want to make the colour brown, just get a little bit of black and a little bit of white, because really we're just marking out the outside anyway, so don't worry about that. Okay, so onwards from there, I'm going to um, mark out where the legs are going to go. So, they're coming down like so, it's slightly at an angle, you can have them closer together or further apart, it's really up to you. Keep putting your brush back into your mixture there. I'm not going to do the feet, I'm just going to come out a little bit at the bottom because um, they're going to be in the grass, you won't see the feet anyway. So, Okay, and then after that I'm going to make the shape of the face. Now then, the shape of the face as you can see is at a slight angle on its side. So I'm going to start up here first of all, don't worry about the hair there, um, and I'm going to make the shape of the face first. So I'm going to start at an angle like so, and then I'm going to come out, don't worry about the ears, down, further out that way maybe, and round. So I'm coming in a little bit lower on the cheeks, as in more of an angle like that. So it's a slight, so sort of like an egg shape, really. 
Don't worry if it's not perfect, doesn't have to be because we can always uh, fix that at any stage. And then I'm going to just mark out where the ears are going to go. And again, ears, um, don't worry if they're not perfect. But So I'm going to come out at an angle like this. And then I'm going to come in at an angle slightly like that. You can make them as big or as small as you want. Shauna here's got some pretty big ears. And then I'm going to come start in and go out again like that. And then I'm going to come in at a point like that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to come in, or I should say out, and then in. It's a bit like a triangle, really. Well, not triangle, a, um, what shape is that? <laughs> diamond. Diamond. There you go, a diamond shape. That's probably about it. Oh, it'll come in that one in a bit more. Okay, so that's the basic shape we've got going, which is a good start. So I'm just going to let you guys catch up a second and I'm just going to put some more of these markings out there. We will go over this with white anyway, so you won't see necessarily the brown coming out from there. Okay, so hopefully you're catching up well. I want to see all these lovely paintings afterwards, so please, please get your parents, or if the parents are painting along, to put them on the Facebook site, because um, I'd love to see them. Okay, so my next step, I'm just going to mark out where the facial features are going to go. So for this, at the top of your ear, if you come in, and then round back, onto the side like that, okay? So it's kind of coming in, out, back round again. And so I'm starting from the top of the ear. I'm gonna do the same thing on here. You don't want it too narrow in the middle because you want, you want room for the, the facial features there. So let's come in and back out again, okay? Similar thing I'm going to do for the ears. I'm just going to mark out where my pink kind of tone is going to go. So it's just making an oval oblong shape in the middle, like so. Yeah, mine, mine's not perfectly straight, but that's okay. You don't worry about that. Okay, so the next step is Um, now there's a couple of things you can do here. If you don't have brown, as I've said to you before, I am going to teach you quickly how to make it because what we're going to do first is we're going to make the, the body brown because as you can see there's some brown showing through here because if you try and do it just white without putting any other tone in, it, you won't see the depth and, and, or the, the woolly feature. So I'm going to put some brown on the bottom area. So to make brown, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow here to the side, like so. I'm not going to make too much because I've got the brown. A little bit of the red. So it's coming up with a bit of an orangey tone now. Very, very tiny amount of blue. reason is because if you go too far blue, you're going to get, well, yeah, green. See, I've got a little green there, so I'm going to get a little bit more red. It's really, you have to keep sort of trying a little bit of each until you get to the brown tone. Mix it all up. So I'm getting a reddish brown at the moment, but that's okay. I'm going to put a tiny, tiny touch of blue in there. Whoa. So you see I've got a little bit darker brown now, but you can see it's pretty much getting there. And if you want to make a lighter tone, you can add a little bit of white in. If you want to make a darker tone, brown, you can add a little bit of black in. So that's basically the base of what we're going to do here. But if, you, as I say, if you have a brown one already, then perfect. I'm not going to do it just straight brown, though. I am going to add a little bit of white, because I don't want it too dark. Just a little bit of white to my mixture to make it sort of a soft brown. You can do the same thing with the one you've mixed. 
and make it a very light brown. As I said, don't worry if it's not too uh, much the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the larger brush now to cover the body. If you've got the small brush, you can work with it, but I'm just going to go to a slightly angled brush here to just cover the area a bit quicker. So I'm just going to cover all this area with brown or light brown. Doesn't matter if you get two tones going, it's absolutely fine. If you've got two tone browns, if you have to mix some more again and it comes out slightly different, it does it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go right up to the face here. Round the edges. It's almost got a yellowish tone to it, this brown. That's the one I made first with you guys, or for you guys, if you haven't got the brown already. A little bit of water, if you're running out of paint, will stretch it a little bit further. the face here. Just pushing that into the canvas just so I don't see the white anymore. Right, so I'm not going to worry about the face because we got kind of a light pink tone, whitish pink tone going on in the face, so I'm not worried about that. Okay, so once you've got that covered, I'll give you a couple of minutes to finish. That's the basis of our Shaun of the Sheep. And then um, we're going to stick with the larger brush because we're going to cover the area outside now. So whatever brush you've got, you can have a flat brush, a round brush, uh, any of those will do to cover the area. So just be careful when you go around the outside of your sheep so that you don't cover it up. So I'm going to get the straight blue. Now this is called cyan blue, but uh, Windsor blue, um, any blue really is good. It's okay. If you want to make a lighter blue, you can add a little bit of white to it. If you don't want dark blue in the background, you know what? It's your painting, you guys. You can do what you like. So I'm making a slightly lighter blue than that one by adding a little bit of white. So I'm going to cover that area now. And this is lighter as you can see, but it covers quite well. When you've got a little bit of white in it, it tends to cover better than if it's just a straight tone of blue. It's just nicer to have a darker tone background. So if you want to do the clouds, they stand out a bit more at the end. So, But if you have it too light, you, you won't be able to show the clouds off very well. And also, you know, if you want to start out darker blue and come down... Um, Lighter by adding white as you come down, you can do that as well. I'm using both sides of my brush so that I can get all the paint off there. I did wash my paint brush off, just FYI. <laughs> Hopefully in advance you'll, you'll realise I did that, but uh, sorry if you didn't get to that. But And also, you can have streaky blue. It does not have to be a, a perfect straight blue because the sky is uh, a multitude of shapes and sizes, sizes, shapes, I should say, tones, there you go. You all know what I mean, right? Okay. So I'm gonna steadily go round his ears. These little angled brushes are quite good. I mean, I've got a bigger one too that works well on bigger um, bigger canvases, but I can also use it on this one. So any one, you just go around the area just by using the edge. So I'm gonna take this slowly so you can follow me. 
you want to get rid of brush strokes, it's just best to go long ways over or length ways over, or keep going the area, go over the area and sort of crisscross your brush in like cross motions to get rid of any any shapes or any brush strokes I should say. So again I'm just going around this area slowly. Oh, a little Shauna. Now again, another idea at the end. I mean, Shauna's holding a, a, a flower, as you can see, but you know what? I've seen sheep with flowers in their hair. Not literal sheep with flowers in their hair, but you know, paintings of sheep with flowers in their hair. So if you want to stick some flowers in Shauna's hair and make her a little bit different, then you can do that. But, uh, Right, so I'm going slowly around here. Okay, I'm getting there. It is quite a bit lighter, I think, the tone I've chosen here, but that's okay. If you want to choose a different colour, of course, you're quite welcome. If you've got that far already. If you've already got blue, that's fine as well. Anything you don't like, you can always go back over it at the end. Once the paint's dry, it's quite versatile. You can you know, paint a little area over it white, and then you can go over it again with what color you want. Just make sure you wait for each section to dry before you go over it again. So as you can see, I'm sort of making, again, those brush strokes around the sheep that go sort of in and out a little bit of the shape that I've made so I don't I don't want it a perfectly round shape because the the fur of the sheep is uh comes down in kind of little ringlets really it's um it's not a perfect uh wool of course I call it fur but you know wool there you go the sheep's wool Okay. I'll keep going down here. I want to get right down towards the grass area. I don't want it to be a straight line. So what I'm going to do when I get to the grass area is I'm going to make some I'm going to get my brush and I'm going to make downward strokes like this into the blue so that I leave little um, areas that are white where I'm going to put the green in so that it looks like the green's coming up into that area. It's a lot easier to do it that way. Again, I'm going to do that in the middle of here, leaving some spaces in my wool at the bottom of my sheep, sheep's body. So you see how I'm making a jagged edge there? I'm going to do the same over here. All right. Hopefully you're all keeping up. You'll have to let me know. I'm just going to go over, just blend this in a little bit. If it gets too dry too quick, it's very hard to sort of go over it. Sometimes you have to either work on it while it's still wet or wait till it's completely dry before you can um, go over any areas you don't like. Okay, I'm happy with that so far. Hope everybody's happy with theirs. As I said, I'm not going to rush this because I know some of you are catching up. My name's Carol, by the way. You'll have to let me know what your names are when you post your pictures. I'd love to see them. OK. 
Okay, so that's the basis. So next I'm going to go to white. Now this area should be dry quite quickly and it feels, you know, really if you touch it you'll know if it's dry or not. Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of pink in the ears, and I'll show you if you haven't got straight pink, which I'm not using a straight pink, just wash your brush off, by the way, or if you use a different brush if you want to. And if you've got some uh, paper towel here, just blot your, your brush on there. So there's a little bit of pink in his face or her face here. So if you want a little bit of pink, just take a little tiny bit of red, grab some white. You'll see if you grab too much red, you are going to get it quite dark. So. Um, Start, start with the white probably and add a little bit of red and you'll get a sort of a, t a pinkish tone. So I'm going to put the pinkish tone all the way in the central area of Shauna's face, like so. I, think I might as well just bring it all the way up here, it doesn't matter if I go over it with a different thing, colour. Okay, so that's just got the basis there of her face. And then you'll see in the middle of her ears they're a little bit pinker. So I'm going to add a little bit more, a little bit more red to my white. And I'm going to start in that little circle we made. And that's still quite pink. I think I'm going to do it all pink like that, and then I'm going to add a little bit more red and make it a little bit darker just in this area right at the end of the ear there. Oops. Okay, so that's made the ears a little bit more pink. Now you should be able to go over this area here as well. I'm going to just do basically sort of a roundish mark here. It doesn't want to be sort of perfect around. That's still quite wet, so it should sort of blend a little bit. It's just a very soft, round mark there. That's where the mouth's going to go pretty much on the nose. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, so you might see some pink bits in here as well. That's just adding a little bit of tone to it. So I'm going to add a little bit more red and I'm going to bring a few pink bits in here. You may not see them. When you cover it with white, you will lose some of it, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's just under, under the tone there. You might just see a little bit of pink tone poking through. You can, you know, leave those areas if you want. Or if at the end you want to put some more in, you can do that as well. tend to left mine pinker on the outside areas that I've got there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Just wait for you guys to catch up. I'm going to wait till the very end to do the black. The reason why is because it's much easier to have a cleaner brush than a, a black brush because your water will turn black if you use the black too soon when you're washing it off. So we're going to go actually next to our grass. I'm going to use the same brush, which is my small angle brush, which I can give it a wash off because it only had pink on it. I'll blot it on my paper here like so. But again, if you don't have an angle brush, any brush will do. I have a flat brush like this, like this, or a slightly a rounded one like that. Whatever you've got works basically. I do have a big big flat one as well which um, you can see there's a difference in the size there. But any will work. So I've got kind of two tones of green going on here. A darker green and a light green. Um, I'm going to start off with the light green and then I can put the darker green tones on top. So again if you do not have green already, I do have a green which is just a um, it's called mid green, but uh, Farlow green is also very good. If you do have Farlow green in tubes, uh, which I've got some in this 
uh, kind of tube. It is quite a stronger color, so you will need to add a little bit more um, yellow or white with it to, to, to make it a bit more subtle. So, so to make green, I'm going to get some yellow here. As I said, I'm going to make a light, light green first. I'm going to grab a tiny bit of my blue, and I'm going to put that in there. You can see it immediately turns green. I don't want it too dark, so I'm going to put a little bit of white back into it and maybe a little bit of yellow. So I'm making a soft green, really. Okay. So once I've made that, I'm going to add, I'm going to really cover all this area with that green. It doesn't matter about the brush strokes quite as much, but I'm going to come right up into those, those areas that I left free, if you like. I'm going to come right up into those areas with the light green. So even the bits I've just left up there, look. I'm going to come right up there. And then the rest you can just paint anyhow, really. It's just the undertone of the colour, or of the paint, I should say. Picture. Hmm. Right, so I'm going to do that light colour all along, first of all. I didn't mix an awful lot of that paint, so I may have to mix a little bit more as I'm going. You know, some people mix too much paint and some people don't mix enough, and that's just the way it is in, in art. Nobody works the same. Well, maybe some people do, but on the whole, everybody works differently, and, and everybody's paintings will look different, which is what we want to see. So when you come up to the feet, it doesn't matter if you leave a little um, grass coming up into the leg a little bit more. That's okay. So again, I'm being careful around his leg though, I don't want to go over it too much. If you're finding your brush is getting a little dry, just add a touch of water back on it, put it back into your paint mixture, and you'll see it starts to flood a bit better again. But if you're getting a very thin tone, it means you just haven't got enough paint. So you might have to go back in and mix that color again, unless you've got lucky enough to have a light green going already. Let me just put that down a minute. If you're like me, I'm working on a small easel here and you can't quite get to the bottom. So do have to lift it up at some stage to get to it. And I'm just gonna finish that corner there. Right, so once I've done the light tone green, I'm going to make a darker green, and that is really simple in that I'm going to add slightly more blue to my um, yellow, like so. Tiny bit of water back in just to make it flow, basically. And then I'm going to put some tones in of the green. I'm just holding it up a little bit so I can get to the bottom. And this is where you just or as much as or as little as you wish in there. They don't all have to come from the bottom. You can start at the top and put some little blades of grass there. A little bit more water in that one. Like so. A little bit of water again, just to get it going. I'm trying to cover the white, because there's a little bit of white showing through there with anything I've got, really. That's green or green or a light green. I'm just going to add a little bit of white, a little bit more yellow. When you add a little bit of white to that mixture, it stands out a bit more. I don't know if you can see that, but the color actually does kind of stand out a little bit more. So if you wanted to add some bits going through there, a little bit more white into the green and yellow, and we'll just make it stand out a little bit more. 
Okay, and if you want a little bit darker tone, I'm, I'm going to just add a few blades of slightly darker. Again, I'm going to put more blue than, than yellow, so I've got some slightly darker green tones in there. Here and there. Be random, you know, it doesn't have to be uniform or all one shape or size. Okay, so that's the grass done. Okay, give you a couple of minutes to catch up. Now next we're going to go to the um, cloud and then the birds because again we want to go to white before we go to black. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, you'll need to clean your brushes off just dunk them in the water and if your water's getting really dirty maybe just get the paper towel and just wipe the brush up a bit more and then just don't have to dunk it in just dip it in and then wipe it off again and then we'll get that nice and clean again with the, with the clouds it doesn't really matter which brush you use but I will be honest with the birds here that I've got in the sky it's better to use the small round brush than it is um, the angled brush because it's not so easy to use but for the cloud itself I can use the angled brush so I'm going to take some white and I need a little bit more white white is always something you need a lot of when you're painting so it's good to buy more white than any other color so, so I'm just getting my white here on my brush just dabbing it in so it goes up the brush a little bit more and then I'm going to sort of make a half circle effect as I'm going along. Fill that bit in there. And then I'm going to make the underside quite soft because clouds tend to be quite white on the top area. So what you can do is add a bit more white on this top area of the cloud like this and the area at the bottom can be just left um, slightly transparent because that's the way if you look at the clouds well there's lots of clouds out today actually okay and you can go over that again once it's dry as well to make it more puffy or whatever, or you can put more clouds in that's entirely up to you. Let's say if I want to put another little one here. I know I don't have it in that one, but you can put another little one. Because that one's in the distance a bit more, so you know it doesn't matter if it's a smaller one. So that one's sort of faded in the background. I'm still going to put a little bit more white on the top here though. On that one as well. And that one. Can see I've got a little bit of blue in this cloud um, you know you can go back and do that at the end as well I'm not going to do it until the end because I've left it a little bit more transparent on the bottom or if if you touch your brush really lightly on the bottom what you can do is you can still see a little blue through to the um, underside so you don't necessarily have to put the blue on but if you want to put a light blue on I've just put a light blue on there okay How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing okay. I'm going to go to my birds. I'm going to pick up my small brush now, my small round brush, like so. Any any round, small, brown, small brush will do. Uh, again, I'm going to get the white. Now, when I do uh, try and get a point on my little round brush, I tend to roll the brush slightly in my paint because it gives it more of a point. Not all brushes are perfect, but um, it, it gives it a the best point I can possibly get. And I lean my little finger here on this side to get a, a steady hand. And I'm just coming in, it's like a little V, a little kind of like dot in the middle and out. So that's your bird shape basically. I think mine's a little bit too, mine's not bending quite as much as it could do. So I'm gonna bend it a little bit more, make his body look like that and out of it. Uh, to get some more white going. 
It's up to you how many birds you do. I'm going to do three, I think, just because odd numbers are my thing. And you can put them anywhere you like. Oops, I've got to roll my brush there so it's not blobby. Because it goes a bit blobby if you don't roll it. Ooh, he's come out a bit thicker. Maybe he's a bit closer to the, to the, the viewer here. I'll give him a bigger body that way. If I give him a bigger body, he'll look like he's coming in a bit closer, maybe. Okay. I'm happy with that. So far, so good. So, as you can see, we haven't touched this yet. So we are going to go to this next. Um, again, you can use whatever brush you like. I'm going to show you both ways of using, you know, whether you've got a small round brush or an angle brush, or even a round brush. I'll, I'll, I'll show you all of those. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make, basically, with the small brush, just brush strokes like this. So I'm not gonna cover it completely white, and, and as I think I've said before, is because I want some of that brown showing through. So here, you can just make white brush strokes. This is where you will need a bit more white paint, like me. Oops. I'll squeeze it out a bit and we may need to go over this a few times to make it stand out well doesn't matter if you come outside of that line that's fine as well I'll come right up to the face though it's good to have lots of white on this one actually so don't don't um you know, put your water, uh, brush in the water because it does need to stand out. And the thing is about white on a dark surface, it does show up better, but you may need more than one coat. So, so this is with my small brush. As you can see, I'm just going to let those bits float down at the bottom there, and I'm leaving some of that brown and pink showing through. And I'm going to go to my other brush just to show you with the angle brush. You can still do the same thing. Just make sure you got it. So you can see, you can still just lean into it a bit, push it into the canvas a little bit, and you can still make the same effect. So either brush works. I'm gonna come right up to his neck, her neck, Shauna, like so. Do we need more white, I'm running out. Be careful you don't pick up any other colour with your white, so um, keep it separate if you can from all your other colours. Come on. All right. Okay, that's a good blob this time. And as you can see, I'm trying to keep the shape sort of going round like this. So I'm starting outside, angling it towards the side there, and then let me just go round the face. And then as I'm coming in to the middle, I'm sort of angling those strokes more into the middle of it. I'm coming outside my line a bit. That's good because it gives the effect of the wooliness of his coat, her coat. I should have named it a he. I knew I should have done. <laughs> Keep calling it a he. But it's Shauna. She's pink, kind of. But, you know, if you've got any boys want to call it something else, <laughs> not sure maybe, but, you know, sand the sheep, whatever. You can do that too. So as you can see, now I'm starting to add more and more white as I'm going over it. Because one coat doesn't always stand out well. So I'm still leaving some of that brown showing through, though, here and there. Because... As I said, it shows the depth a bit more of the of the wool when you leave a little bit showing through. Up here, a little bit more. You can always go back at any stage and add some more wool if you want to, so or some more white I should say.
with white paint, I'm going to give you a little tip. Um, student grade paint is, is, is a good consistency, it's thick and creamy, but as you get to a higher range artist paint, they have, uh, tend to have um, single pigments in and they're a deeper or a thicker consistency. So they may show up better. Yes, they cost a lot more money uh, if you get a professional grade paint. So uh, that's that's the difference. But you know these work just as well. So I don't you know don't encourage you to go out and buy the expensive ones unless you're a professional. You want to be a professional. <laughs> Even I don't use those. I'm not sure if I'd call myself professional, but <laughs> you can judge. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have a look at the end see if that's enough, but I think that's enough for now. So I'm quite happy with that. So you'll still need some white. I've run out of my white already. So if you need some more, get your tubes or whatever you've got and squeeze a bit more out. So I'm going to give Shauna some nice, um, a nice mop of curly hair on the top. So with any brush again, it doesn't matter if it's a small brush or this brush, you can just blob, come out of that brown line that we painted, go right up to the ear, and you can make sort of blobby, curly, circly shapes to get sort of the effect of her hair. If you're still seeing the brown line through, don't worry about that because we can go back over it again and make sure it's well covered. In fact, we will do that at some stage. Or if you've got more paint on your brush sometimes that, and you just blob it on, it'll look a little 3D as in thick, but it will cover it in the end. Okay. We'll wait for everybody to catch up. If you do like my little white spots here, dots, whatever, it's just given an inference of some uh, like gypsophilia or, or flowers and you can put your own interpretation that whether it's white or different colors I mean you can just give it a little I think it just kind of like shows up a little bit more it doesn't matter how big or small they are but while you've got your little white uh, your brush and your white on it you can do that depends on where you are in your painting you can always go back and do that at the end I'm just doing this in the meantime so that I know some of you probably need to catch up. But that's okay, this video is going to be available indefinitely so you can go back to it at any point and follow it along. I kind of like that, I think it's a good effect. Okay, so next step, ladies and gentlemen, is the black. If you do not have black, hopefully you have, it is possible to make black without having a black. It can be a little uh, tricky to get it going, but basically if you take some blue and some red, sometimes you have to just keep adding dif uh, different amounts to finally get to a black. So far, I don't know how that's looking on the screen. You can see the blue tone slightly through it. If I actually get a little bit of yellow, just a tiny bit of yellow, that may take it from a more, not got much left here, but just a little bit, you'll see that that blue tone in the background is starting to vanish. So that's about as best as I can probably do, but when you put it on, it hopefully will look mostly black. I'm just gonna try it on anyway just to see where I'm at. I've got to watch I don't stick my arm in my wet paint. So um, I think that works pretty well. What do you think, Annie? So if you, you don't have a black, as I said, the blue and the red, and maybe a little bit of yellow if you're still seeing some of the blue coming through. So what we're doing here is we're going with black, and I'm using the small brush because it is easier to get um, into the little places. This is where Miss Carol needs her glasses on though because I need to be able to see a little bit closely. So just slowly going around that pink area. 
with a small round brush. And then you can come straight in to this area here. So you don't have to, don't worry about the line that we made. That doesn't matter. A little bit of water on that to make it flow back into my paint. You can lose that brown line there if you want to by coming right up to it. So that's one side done. The pink didn't come up quite so well as on that side. So I'm going to be careful on this side. Again, I want to make sure I'm not putting my hand in the wet paint. If you guys are working on a flat table, it's probably easier to get to it than if it's on an easel at this stage. But just be mindful because before I started this video, I had a nice striped top on. And because we were trying to fit the cam, make sure the camera was at the right angle, I ended up sticking my arm right in all the paint I had ready. So yeah, never wear good clothes when you're painting. If you've got an apron, I would definitely recommend putting it on or a little smock or something. I don't know if they even do artist smocks these days. I'll have to inquire. I think I need to get one for sure. Okay, so again, I've gone round that ear. I've left that one a little bit longer so than the other one, but I can go back and fix it at any stage. A little bit more water, a little bit more paint on my brush. All the way up to that edge. All the way up to my line. You can go slowly. You don't have to keep up. Oh, so I nearly got my elbow in the paint there. Let's be careful. Okay, I have sort of made a little mark there, so I've got to be careful again. I should be able to fix that by just bringing it down a bit more, just to meet the edge there. Yeah. Okay, before I go on to the rest of the facial features, I'm going to do the legs. So again, starting from, doesn't have to be straight flat. You can pretend that the fur is sort of hanging down, or the wool is hanging down into the leg a bit more. And again, don't leave it flat at the bottom, just bring it sort of down slightly. Because it's disappearing into the grass. All right. Do the other one. Getting a little dry, so I'm going to water on there. And make it a bit thicker. If you want, you can add some tones by adding a little bit of white to your grey. And when I say tones, it's just really like the shadow in effect. Like if you want to bring a little grey in there to sort of break up the black, you could always put a little bit on the front or on the side of his leg. But, you know, it's not essential. As I said, I think I'm going to go back and put a little bit more white back on there afterwards. Oh, his leg's not quite straight there. Bringing him down, disappearing into the grass. I might bring some grass back up there actually afterwards. Okay, so we're getting there. Shauna's getting there. We do have to wait for the black to dry here so we can put the eyes in anyway, so that isn't uh, something we should rush to do. And I may go over my birds because they're a little transparent there. Okay, so again, you'll need the flat brush, I mean, the small round brush for the detail here, which is his mouth, her mouth. Oh, Shauna, I'm sorry. <laughs> How dare I? Okay, so again, you can either get a point on your brush by rolling it on your palette. If you just roll it like that, you'll get a point. 
or you can flatten the brush and it gives an edge but um, try a little bit of it first again I'm avoiding my wet space because I've got quite a big blob actually of paint there which I'm just gonna blend in a bit with my finger which you can do rub it off so with her nose She's going slightly, don't forget her face is slightly sideways. I think this one's less sideways than that one, but I'm gonna just do sort of a little slightly curved bit for her nose, like that. I'm gonna bring it up this way a bit. And then for her mouth, it's just a line coming down like that. And because she's holding a flower, I'm gonna have her mouth slightly wider on one side so I'm going to start where I started that one and I'm going to have it come further up this way because she's kind of like got hold of it and kind of half smiling I guess you could say and then on this side I'm going to just bring that out a little wider because it'll look like she's grabbing it with her teeth a little bit maybe I'm going to bring that close to the camera so you can see a little bit. Hopefully you can see what I've done there. Okay. Again, I'm not going to go do the flower to the end because this is a little wet. So we're going to wait for that to dry. I don't know how everybody's black's doing, but mine is still a little bit wet. So I'm going to just hang on a little bit for that. But um, you will need your round br brush for the eye, um, centre of the eye, but um, you can wash your brush off for the end of that because you're going to need white next. And that's where, you know, it's best to actually wait until the end before you put any more white on because we want to put the flower in before we get too far down the road. So what we're going to do now then is just wait a few minutes for my black area to dry. So to get an area dry quick, you can either get your little canvas and you can fan it. So if you fan it, or get a hairdryer if you're really desperate, <laughs> it will dry really, really quickly. So just bear that in mind. It's a bit extreme getting a hairdryer, but that's, you know, a lot of professionals do that to dry their um, paintings. And I don't know if you can see in the background, I'm gonna point in both cameras here but just here I have another painting that's going to be well we're going to consider it a family painting because it's called surfs up we've got surfboards we've got the ocean we've got a kite in it which you maybe can't see but I'm going to bring that at the end so you can see it and I'm going to be doing that hopefully next weekend uh, so I hope you can join me again for that um, it's a fun one, as I said, it's more of a family one. Anybody can join in that one. It does not have to, to be a um, certain age group. So if you'd like to join me, I'd love to see you. Well, hear you, see you, hear you. <laughs> have you join me? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm still quite wet there. So I'm just gonna take my time and let everybody catch up. You've caught up already and you have got a dry touch here, which I'm getting quite dry in this area. If you put it on thickly, it will take a long time to dry and you will have a problem. So you may want to wait uh, at that point. So I think while my black is still dry in here, I'm going to go and grab some green. Now again, if you've got straight green, use it straight from the bottle. If you haven't, you can... Um, use the yellow and the blue. I'm going to use the yellow and the blue. So a little bit of yellow. Don't need, you really don't need a lot for this because uh, it's just the stem. So I'm gonna get the yellow, put it to one side, get a little bit of blue. See, I really only needed a little bit of blue to make that green, but for it to show up. Oops, see, I've got too much blue. That's what happens, you see. You wanna make a dark color okay again you can either roll your brush round to get a point or you can flatten your brush both sides like so and you'll still be able to get an edge so I'm gonna now put the flower in 
because this part's dry even though this part isn't. So I'm going to be careful about where I put my um, brush here. So I'm going to start where I want to in her mouth. So about here. I'm going to come out to about there. That's quite a light green. I'm trying to keep a straight line there. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue to it just to make it show up a bit better. And also so that it looks like it's coming out the other side of her mouth. I'm going to bring that all the way over here. You can't actually see that very well. So if you want to bend it so that it, you know, the flower might be drooping at the end, then you'll see it because you can't actually see it going into the black. So let's say it's kind of bending like this a little bit. Okay. To make that show up a bit more, I'm going to grab a little bit of white in with my green. And when I say show up, I mean right where the black is because it kind of disappears. And now it shows up a bit better, you see. And to make little um, leaves, I'm going to make a couple of leaves there. You can make however many you want, but I'm going to make two. And if you want two-tone leaves, some of you, if you want to do, go for go for a bit more, then you can make one side sort of a little bit darker than the other side of the leaf, so it sort of shows up two-tone, two-tone, two-tone. So like one half of it a darker tone, and one a lighter tone, like so. I think my black's getting dry now, so I'm quite happy with that. So I'm gonna wash off my brush. I'm going to go to the white first. So I've washed my brush off now, the small brush. I'm going to take the white and as this is touch dry, you can usually see if it's dry, but touch dry, I'm going to make that eye shape. Now the eye is quite up to, high up in a sheep, right next to the ear. So go quite high up. Again, you're just making a an oval shape like that. I think I've done mine a little bit too high up to the ear, but I'm sure it will work out fine in the end. I'm gonna watch I don't lean on that again. I'm go over this side a little bit. Don't worry if it doesn't go on smoothly, it's not a big deal. I think mine needs to come down a little bit more. This is where if you've gone a little high, like I've just gone a little bit high, you can, you can always um, black that out again, like wait for the white to dry and just black it out. It's no big deal. Best to have them at equal, equal sizes and, and uh, equal lengths of course both sides. So I'm going to wait for that to dry because it's um, going to take a while. Going back to my flower now. So you can wash off your brush. I'm going to make a pink. Again I'm going to make the pink. If you've got a pink already that's great but I'm going to grab some red, some white. You can make whatever flower colour you want. So there's no you must do a pink, you can do a blue, you can do a lilac, you can do yellow, whatever you want. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, um, water to my pink, like so. And again, make sure your, your white is dry and then you can just make the petals. And again, making petals is, you're just going to make the shape. With a small brush is easier to come out and make that shape a bit more than it is. A larger brush is not going to work quite as well. Okay. I start small and then I can get a little bit bigger 
to get a better shape on the petals going. And then I can fix any issues if I don't like the shapes. Okay. Again, I'm going to wait for my flower to dry before I put the central part on. Um, if you like your flowers with pointy uh, petals, you can do that, or you can do what I've done there is I've rounded them out. So if you don't like pointy ones, you can now go back and round them out, which is what I'm doing. Just round the edges on the very tip. Okay. Okay, now then, my sheep's eyes, as I said, are quite high. I don't know if I like them, and I'm going to show you something. Uh, if you don't like where yours are and they're too high, as I said, a quick fix is to just get your black. Because if you've not done it too thick, you can just get a little bit of black and just go over it. We all make mistakes, as you can see, but... It's, it's not a mistake, it's just really a preference, I want to say, as to where you want things. So I'm just going to wait for that to dry again now. Sometimes that's it, we just do have to wait for things to dry. So I'm going to grab some more white while I'm waiting, and I'm going to put a few more white um, wool strokes here and there, where it looks a little transparent. So. If you want to do that, or if you've, um, you're still working on your flower, go ahead. But we're almost done. We've just got to do some far finishing touches. And Shauna will be completed. Okay, if you have got to the point you can do your flower, so for the yellow to really show up, obviously this still needs to be dry in the middle, um, because if you try and paint yellow on top of it, it will go a little orange. I'm getting a little bit of white, and I'm going to put some white in there. It's somewhat dry, so it will kind of show up because it's easier to put the yellow on top of white than put straight yellow because the yellow kind of sinks into any color. It always needs a little touch of um, white in with it anyway. A little bit of that there. Okay. A little bit more white. I told you I need a lot of white. I'm gonna, this is where you can just, if you're waiting for an area to dry, just go over some other areas that are dry that you wish to go over, like I'm trying to lose the line in a, in a little woolly mop of hair. So I've just gone over that again with a bit more white. As you can see, I've kind of highlighted this flower here with a little dark edge. That's up to you if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that with this one. I'm going to leave it as it is. But if you want to, you can. So I'm just going to see if now, I'm grabbing a little bit of yellow, it should now start to, yeah. So I'm just dabbing it lightly because I don't want it to mix with the, there we go, so we've got a little white going on there. And if you wanted to, 
the little, um, is it stamen in the middle? What do you call that? Like the little bits you can put little dots if you want with anything really. I mean, even if you want to put the little red dot, green dot, just to show the, the uh, I think it's called the stamen. I'm sure somebody will correct me there. I know you guys know, but you can do that as well if you want. Just put some little green dots. Mine's not going to work because my green's gone a bit dry. And sometimes you have to wait for it to dry too, so it's probably what I should be doing. Yeah, it's not going to show up. But you get the idea, that's something you can add at any stage. Okay. Right, I'm hoping my eyes are done, but if you've got the eyes in the right place in the first place, you don't have to worry at all. I am the one that made the mistake there by putting them up a little bit too high. So, let's see, it's a little tacky, not too bad though, so I should be able to do it, I'm going to bring it slightly down from where I was, I was just a little bit too high, so I've got an angle going here, as you can see, I mean if you're clever enough and you can leave the little black bit in the middle, then, then go for it, but for me, it's easier just to do the black blob once it's dry. So again, I'm trying to make both at the even, um, equal size and shape. I think that's better. It might take a little bit of concentration there to um, Get it how you want it. Yes, I'm much happier with where those eyes are. So I'm just waiting now for that to dry and then I'm going to put the little black um, circle in the middle. And in the meantime, that shouldn't take too long, but this is where you can touch up any areas you want to. So the white here is a little bit transparent, so I'm just going over it a little bit. Same with the clouds. Ooh. Pretty much done. Just waiting for that to dry. Almost there. I'm sure everybody's ahead of me. A little bit more here on this, on her head. Sorry, Shauna. So sorry. As I said, if you want to put a flower in her hair or something, you can do that too. She would really appreciate that. <laughs> I'm not sure I like the little green bits in the middle either. But you know what? Okay. Final bit is the eyeball. The eyeball. It's the middle, of course, you know what I mean. I'm going to make sure my brush again is rolled because I want a nice dot. You could, if you roll your brush and then dab your black, uh, your br uh, brush into the black paint, you should be able to just touch it like that. So instead of making a shape as in going round, if you just keep putting your brush back into the paint and just touching it until you get to the shape you want. I'm not sure yet if that's big enough, but it's best to start small and then adjust as you need to go. I think maybe a little bit bigger. Yes, 
I think that's it. Voila! So everybody, I'm sure some of you are still working, but I just want to say a big thank you for joining me today. And I hope that you can join me again next week. Um, as I said, we're going to do a family one, so it will be open to all ages. This will be next weekend. I will put the dates out on our Facebook site so your parents can have a look and let you guys know. And in the meantime, um, well, uh, grab this one. I'm going to just show you the other painting while you're still going. No, okay, I'm going to grab it if I can and show you. Here it is. I'm going to show you on the bigger camera. So you can see I've got a um, um, kite. I've got a beach ball in there and I've got some um, surf boards. So I hope you can join me. So I will say au revoir, goodbye, and I'll see you soon. Bye.